All right, last FRQ number six on the 2024 AP statistics exam. Um, if I have any corrections or mistakes any make, I will put it in the uh, as a pinned comment. So check that pinned comment um, for any corrections that I have. Um, okay, company sells a certain type of whistle. The price of the whistle varies from store to store. Julio, Julio, sorry, a stat statistician at the company wants to estimate the mean price in dollars of this type of whistle at all stores that sell the whistle. Okay, identify the appropriate inference procedure for uh, Julio to use. Um, I don't know what I mean, an inference procedure. Oh, I, I think they're just saying what kind of test we're gonna run. Okay, so this is a this is a confidence interval. This is a what kind of this? So this is a mean. This is a oh, the I don't know what do you call these things. Uh, it's a confidence interval. That's a, um, a t interval. Um, it's a one sample um, t confidence interval. Divide the, um, if he wants to estimate the mean price. Yeah, one sample T confidence interval. I don't know if that's the official name. I, I've never heard, like, I've never, I don't know. I don't recall being asked what the name of the thing is, but that should, as long as you say it's one sample, as long as you say it's T and not a Z. Why do I know T? Because I don't know the standard deviation of the pricing, right? So it's more common to use the T um, for one sample mean, maybe mean, you should say mean, I guess, instead of proportion. Describe the parameter for the inference procedure. The parameter is going to be mu, which is the mean price uh, of the whistle. Okay. Julio called the managers of 20 randomly selected stores to sell the whistle, whistle and recorded the price of the whistle at each store following as a dot plot of Julio's data. Okay. So the summary statistics are shown in the following table. Julio wants to examine some characters, so they give you mean, standard deviation, minimum, and then the five, five you know, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. Julio wants to examine some characteristics of the distribution of the sample of whistle prices. Describe the shape of the distribution of the sample of whistle prices. Justify your response using appropriate values from the summary statistics table. So generally, we want to list out, we want to talk about the spread. We want to talk about the center. We want to talk about the shape. We talk about any outliers. Those are the things that you're going to talk about in this kind of um, in this kind of scenario. So using values. Now we want to use values from the summary statistics table. So especially on the outliers portion there. So the other ones tend to be kind of visual. Um, so like the spread. Um, um, you know, like you you have the standard deviation. So that's how you're going to describe the spread. Um, in terms of shape, I, uh, uh, it's pretty uniform. I mean, there's a little bit of a peak here and a, uh, maybe you could say bimodal just because there's two kind of clustered into here. But I mean, that general shape is going to be like skewed, right? I guess I would, yeah, I would definitely say skewed, right? So there's like a peak here and then there's a skew, a skewedness to the right. So I would say it's generally, uh, skewed, right? So I would say this is, um, um, the distribution, and you got to use words of prices, is slightly skewed right. And because of the skewness, in that I'm I'm gonna mostly focus on the center by the with the median, the the center I'm gonna do the median median instead because that 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 tend, tends to handle better um, when you're talking about like kind of skewed data a little bit median of um four dollars and 88.5 cents um so that's the skew um and an iqr for the spread we'll talk about the iqr which is going to be q3 minus q1 so 5.475 minus 4.51 that's going to be with a 9.65 um, so because of that, um, we can think about what the, what the, what the fences are, because I'm using IQR. You could do within two standard deviations of the mean for outliers, but I'm going to say, um, so, um, let's look at the Q3 plus 1.5 IQR, the maximum bounce. Cause if there's any outliers, it's probably going to be over here. 
So Q3 is going to be 5.475 plus 1.5 times this value. This is going to be our upper fence, basically. Um, so that's our upper fence is equal to 6.9225 is the upper fence. Right, and so we, um, oh, I guess, let me see. Okay, I guess it's not an outlier. So there's no obvious outliers. And then you could go to the left, Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, just to confirm. 4.51 minus 1.5 times that IQR that we got. I get 3.0625. And so um, the minimum is 4.25. So there's no apparent outliers. Now you could also do it with standard deviation. I, 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 I just, you know, I think it's easier to do IQR and median and stuff like that. Um, generally speaking, it's like a personal preference. You couldn't do two, two standard deviations, but I would say there's a slight skew right to it personally, just because of these peaks right there. You could also maybe make a statement that it's pretty uniform with a couple of peaks. Like you could say another way to describe the shape would be pretty uniform, but maybe two bimodal clusters at, um, yeah. Um, using the 1.5 IQ to determine whether they're outliers. Oh, okay. Well, I just did that already. So I guess like, um, I guess we're just going to repeat our work. Sorry, I should have read that question. So this is the upper fence. That is the lower fence. Um, there are no, no, there are no outliers outside these fences, the fences. Okay. It can often be difficult to determine whether the distribution is sample data skewed by looking at the graph of the data and summary statistics, particularly when the sample size is small. Like this one, it was really hard to talk about the skewness. Like you can kind of, this really depends. Thus, statisticians sometimes measure how skewed the data set is. One such measure is the Pearson's coefficient of skewness, which is calculated using the following formula. 3 times the sample mean minus m, which is the sample median, and s is the sample standard deviation. Calculate the Pearson's coefficient of skewness for this for the 20 whistle prices. So that's going to be 3. What's the sample mean? You just look at the table. The mean is 5.12. What's the median? The median is 4.885. And then what's the standard deviation? So this is you're just plugging in formula. You're just reading off the table. You don't need to even know what this thing means. You just have to plug in the formula, right? They give you the formula. You just have to know how to calculate. I mean, I don't know. Like you just have to read off the table. They tell you everything you need to know for that one. Um, so that is 0 0.9489. Okay, show your work. Show this part right here, okay? Like, that's not a lot of work. Just, just show it. Following graph shows conclusions can be made about the shape of the distribution of sample data based on the Pearson's coefficient of skewness and sample size. Indicate the value of the Pearson's coefficient as you calculated for the appropriate sample size. So what is our sample size? I think we did 20, right? Yeah, sample size was 20. So we're going to go to 20 here. And then our coefficient is 0.9, which is like... Uh, 20 and 0.94, so like right around here. Okay, that's just coefficient because we got a positive one here. Um, so this is considered approxi approximately symmetric. This is not. Consider your work in part C. What should you conclude about the shape of the distribution of the sample whistle prices? Justify your answer. Um, because the X is in the strongly skewed, um, because the data point in C and C2 is in the strongly skewed section. Strongly skewed, which way? Strongly skewed right, actually. That's interesting. It's because they're strongly skewed and to the right. When skewed, the data is strongly, the, the, the shape of the, the shape is strongly skewed right. Now, to be precise, I ought to write a little bit more context. Oops, sorry about that. 
I just hate writing that much. The shape of the distribution of whistle prices. If you want to be very clear, make sure there's no ambiguity that you understand context of whistle price, uh, uh, whistle prices. It's strongly skewed, right? Okay. Julio's inference procedure in part AI needs one of the following requirements to be satisfied to verify the normality condition. The sample size is greater than or equal to 30. If the sample size is less than 30, the distribution sample is not strongly skewed and does not have outliers. Using response to the precinct is the normality condition. It is not satisfied because it's not greater than 30, and it is strongly skewed. So no, the sample size 20 is less than 30, and it is strongly skewed. So we do not satisfy that uh, that that normality condition there, and that is that question. <laughs>